This is the halo effect. And I did it all in CapCut. Okay guys, bring snacks and listen because this is going to be a long one. Here are a few things we need to create Ali Abdul's halo effect shorts video. We need a black paper background, which we need to animate by shaking and dots appearing on it. We need a paper tearing effect. We need to cut out and move Ali around. We need a halo which we also need to animate. Then we need the captions and the start and end animations, and a text highlighting effect. Oh, and that was just the first two seconds, so let's get started. Enter CapCut and start a new project with 9 to 16 aspect ratio. I drag the plain black background onto the main layer and enlarge it. After that, I put Ali's Halo Effect short video over it for reference, and then mute it down. I'm looking for a part where the background is clearly visible, and I adjust the background I downloaded from texturelabs.org earlier in my short video to it. I will enlarge it and make it semi-transparent so that I can see when it fits the background in Ali's clip. I adjust, rotate, and enlarge it until I am satisfied with it, just make sure it covers it all up. Since Ali's background is much lighter, I change the black image to gray and check it again. There is still room for improvement, so I go to the adjustment tab and adjust the sharpen, particles, brightness and contrast values until I achieve the desired effect, then I place the halftone image above it. However, here comes a little trick, because unlike in my short video, here I will not use the mask function to achieve the dotted effect, but I have pre-edited the previous halftone image with the PhotoP program. I made four different pictures so that only certain parts are visible, so I can control the appearance of the dots even more. I simply adjust its transparency until I like what I see, then I divide the previously placed image into smaller parts of 20 pixels long, then I delete every second one, and replace the remaining ones with the other variants, in this way. The dots not only change, but also disappear and reappear. Okay, it looks good, so I'll add the camera shake effect and adjust the values. I'll make it slow as possible and a range of 50 is about right. I select the layers and make a compound clip from them. Damn it! I missed one. Undo, select and merge again. Okay that's better, now slow it down to about 0.3. Let's see. What the? Okay this is weird. I think I need to restart CapCut. Alright, saved it. But I'm going to be sure and I save it separately, and I'll continue with that. I started a new project for which I prepared everything again. I dragged the previously prepared background animation onto the main layer. This was the background of the shorts video, and this is the new one we made earlier, and in this video, I will stick with this one. I drag Ali's short video again for reference, and then I drag over clip from one of Ali's normal videos, in which there are no animations only him speaking. I will use this in the tutorial, but of course you can do this for any video you make. I zoom in and position it, then hide it and see when the first effect starts in Ali's video. We will start the animation right here. For this, I will use a paper tear animation, which I will enlarge, then look for a place where the tear is clearly visible, and then I will freeze it to make a picture of it, and I will erase the parts behind it. I find in the original video where Ali is no longer visible, and cut the unnecessary part from my layer and adjust the previously frozen image to it. Using the chroma key I made the yellow part disappear from the still image and then the animation as well, and then I look at where Ali tears the video in the original one. It's roughly around the lights behind him, but since the lights are not so visible in my layer, I position the cut roughly to his ears and check that the X and Y values are the same. I copy my layer and place it above the tear animation, then check auto cutout. This creates the effect that the tear animation is behind Ali, however, if I hide the lower layers, we can see that the auto cutout function works too well and makes the table in front of Ali disappear as well, so I need another layer, which I rearrange and use the split function on the mask tab and adjust it so that only the table is visible. Okay, the layers are done, I'll look for where Ali starts to disappear from the picture, because here, if you look closely, the background behind him disappears. So we have to place a keyframe on the opacity of the bottom layer, I'll check on the original video when the background disappears, then I'll add another keyframe where I set the opacity value to zero. I select each layer and create a new compound clip from them, from which I also make the green part disappear using the chroma key. I check if I overdid the value or not and correct it, making sure that as much green as possible disappears, but all frames of the video remains. Okay, it's looking pretty good, let's see. At about this point, 
Ali lowers himself, giving space to the text, so we solve this with simple keyframes on the compound clip, so that it is roughly similar to the original. I place it a little lower so that the halo fits him well, then I look for the part where Ali completely disappears from the picture and synchronize it with two more keyframes. Since the original video has smooth transitions, I set the curve in the keyframe animation menu and adjust it a little to make it even more curved, achieving an effect similar to the original. Let's start making the texts. I hide my layer and check where the texts are replaced in the original Ali video. We need three different texts with the halo and effect words. I look for the first frame where the animation of the letters is already visible. Here the animation already appears, so I have to start and place the text from here. The first will be the word the, then the word halo, and finally the word effect. Using the original video as a reference, I move the words one by one to their place and adapt the style of the letters by changing their size, the distance between the letters with the character and of course the font until it is almost exactly the same as the original. I leave the words the and effect on the system font because they are almost identical, but Halo needs another one. This ZY Evangel fits the bill, it just needs to be adjusted. Okay, let's see what else do we need. Here is this orange highlight of the word Halo. To do this, I simply take the orange background, drag it on a new layer and look for it while the animation ends and I cut off the part behind it, then roughly place it. Change the transparency so that I can see it better. Uncheck the uniform scale and shrink the width and height separately so as to cover the original and the word halo. Now comes the mask tab and the split function. With this we will achieve the desired highlighting effect. Rotate it by minus 90 degrees, then move it to the beginning of the yellow strip and place a keyframe on it. Then let's go to the end, place another frame and move it to the end so that the entire yellow stripe is visible, then increase the size to the length of the word halo. Let's see what we have. Maybe it would be better on bold, and I'll adjust the settings a little more to make it look more satisfying. Okay, that's better. Let's start with the animations. But before that, I need to make the out animation of the yellow strip above the halo text. I extend it so that it matches the length of our Ali layer, and I do the same with the texts above. I look for where the out animation starts in the original video, then I mark the starting point with the keyframes, and I start to hide the yellow stripe with the mask function. But here I rotate it by plus 90 degrees opposite to the starting one and drag it to the right to make it disappear. Now we can start the text in and out animations. For the animation of the words, the, and effect, I will use the built-in fly-in and fly-out animations. And I will adjust the length of the animations to Ali's original video about 0.8 seconds and then I will set the zoom out animation for the word halo to about for 0.4 seconds and check my result. Okay it's good, let's start the halo animation. In the images folder, I have already imported the halo image that I downloaded from Freepik and I changed it with the help of PhotoP to the extent that I removed the background from it, applied a glowing effect and saved it in three different ways so that the entire halo is visible, as well as only the left and right sides. I'll add the left and right halo images on two new separate layers, but let's leave them in the middle for easier editing and I'll position them later. Since the animation starts from the right, I will hide the left layer while I do this. Similarly to the animation of the yellow strip, I will use the mask function and hide the entire image with it by rotating it by minus 90 degrees. I go to the beginning of the layer, then jump 10 frames 10 times so that it is long enough but easy to calculate with and I cut off the unnecessary parts. I go to the beginning again and create a keyframe for the mask, then jump to the end and create another keyframe, but here I rewrite the rotation to plus 90 degrees, so the mask turns a total of 180 degrees, i.e. half a circle. Then I double the length of the halo layers so that I can do the other half as well. I cut the bottom layer in half and then delete the first part, make it visible and do the same as before. With the help of the mask function, I hide it at the first frame by capturing it at plus 90 degrees, then I go to the end and place another keyframe and rewrite the rotation value to 90 plus 180, i.e. 270, and then I lengthen the halo layers for further editing. Let's see. It is doing its thing, but the animation is not smooth enough due to the shape of the halo. To fix this, I place new keyframes halfway between the opening and closing keyframes, and 10 frames before the closing one, and rewrite the rotation to 45 degrees, thereby speeding up the rotation animation of the last 10 frames. 
I repeat the previous with 10 frames after the first keyframe. It turns out okay. I will repeat these steps with the other layer and check how it looks. I'm going to make a compound clip of them and then speed it up a bit and sync it to the original video. I hide it. Check where the animation starts and speed it up until it roughly matches the original speed. Then I do the positioning and scaling. I make my own Ali layer visible and place the halo animation above Ali with keyframes and adjust it as a few frames so that it stays above Ali's head. Then I freeze the last frame so that the entire halo is still visible. I enlarge and delete the part behind it. Then adjust the position and continue placing the keyframes as Ali slides down. At the very end, the halo rises above the background and slowly disappears. That is, for the last two keyframes, I have to adjust the transparency so that the first one is 100% and the last one is 0%. What the? Again? Three hours later. Okay guys, that sucks. CapCut kept crashing over and over, and I lost some of my work and had to start over, so when I finally managed to do it, I quickly saved it and exported it to MP4. So there may be minor differences in the final result compared to what has been shown so far. It seems that if there are too many complex animations and compound clips in a project, the program does not handle them very well, so a quick tip, chop up the complex videos in several separate projects, then export them one by one and use them together in a new project. Okay, let's continue with the statue animation. Here is a similar picture of the statue. I place the sculpture on a new layer, then position and resize it to match the original video. I apply the camera shake effect, slow it down as much as I can and set the range value to about 50, then make a compound clip out of it and slow it down to about 0.3. I go and find the end of the statue's appearance animation in the original video, place a keyframe, then go to the beginning and place one there, Rotate it 90 degrees and pull it out of the picture. Let's see. It's too even, so you have to set the curve on the Y coordinate in the keyframe animation menu to make the animation smoother. Okay, this will be good. We can start with the glasses. I put it on another layer, then, like the sculpture, I first position it and then resize it, play with the positions a bit and then coordinate it with the original video. If I can see clearly in the original, the sunglasses go beyond the statue tilted a little, so I step back a few frames, go beyond, tilt it by minus 6 degrees, then jump onto the first frame, rotate it back by 45 degrees, and pull the sunglasses out of the picture. I'll check what I did, then I'll adjust the curve in the X coordinate in the keyframe animation and adjust the keyframes a little more to make the transition smoother. Damn it! I forgot the camera shake effect. I can start over, OK sunglasses, scaling, positioning, camera shake, setting values, creating compound clip, slowing down to 0.3, then realignment with the original video according to the above, with keyframes, positioning, scaling, rotation, and finally with keyframe animation smoothing. Next there's a fireworks animation when the sunglasses fall into place. For this I will use a built-in CapCut sticker, so I place it on a new layer in sync with the original, then make a compound clip out of it. After that I find the end of the animation before it repeats, and cut it, then speed it up so that it roughly matches the length of the original, and add the fade in and fade out animations with a length of 0.2 seconds. I'll check it and then adjust it a bit on its size and its position. Okay, next. Here's another Halo animation, falling over the statue. I drag the previously imported full halo image onto a new layer, place it above the statue, and then place it behind the statue in layer order, creating a 3D effect, and after that, I watch it and synchronize it with the original video using keyframes. For the first one, I rotate it by minus 45 degrees, pull it out of the screen, and then use the keyframe animation to smooth out the fall of the halo. After that, the statue and the halo images move to the left and back at the same time, and I achieve this effect by zooming out, that is, I place keyframes at the beginning of the animation on the statue and halo layers. Then I find the end of the animation and place new keyframes on the layers, then I move and resize the images, and of course I smooth out the movements of the X and Y coordinate axis with the help of curves for both of the two layers. Oops, I forgot the sunglasses layer. Well then, I do these things with this layer as well, making sure that the keyframes and dimensions are in place. Let's see what we got. And the next task is already visible. We need to display three texts, 
but a font like the one used by Ali is not available in CapCut, so we have to search a bit on the internet. Fortunately, I found a very similar one on Defont.com called Rubberstamp, the link of which can be found in the description. Since I have already installed and used it, I can now select this in CapCut and it brings it on the top of the list. All I have to do is synchronize it with the original video, drag a new text over it, change the text to the word intelligent, and select the rubber stamp font style, then I reduce the size of the font. But to make it look better, I have to uncheck the uniform scale checkbox and adjust the width and height separately. After that, I select the typewriter animation from among the animations and compare it to the length of the original, then finally tilt the text a little and adjust it. After that, I just have to copy it, rewrite the text and adjust it to the other two words, then I look for the end of the exit animation in the original video and adjust the length of the layers to it, and compare it. And I can already see the next thing, which is Ali, who emerges from below. I pull in my Ali clip that I used earlier, and I erase the sound, enlarge, and position it, and see how far it is visible in the original video, and then cut off the unnecessary part. I find where the animation ends, zoom in a bit, position it, then place the keyframes where the upward movement ends on this layer, and finally where the background reveal ends, and I also place a keyframe on the visibility. I duplicate the new layer and use the auto crop function. Next I will change the transparency of the middle keyframe to 0% on the first layer and 100% on the last one. On the second auto cutout layer, on the opening frame, I drag Ollie down from the screen, then smooth out the animation with curves. One quick check, and we're done with this part. If we take a closer look, Ollie improves this animation by using a small blur at the beginning. I quickly copy the second layer, but only the beginning, up to the first two keyframes is enough, I go to the effects and drag motion blur on it, then adjust the values until I'm satisfied with the result. Then I set the visibility in the first keyframe to 100 and at the end to 0%. I do a quick check, and if I look closely, Ali covers the three texts from before, but if we leave it as text, we can't place it behind Ali, so I need to make a compound clip from them, then rearranging the layers in their order, and then cut off the overhanging parts of the layers. After that, Ali zooms out, which I do with keyframes on the first layer, then I smooth out the animation and try to position it so that Ali's eyes are roughly at the same height in both the zoomed in and out picture. An important tip is that if I had made a compound clip from these layers, I wouldn't be able to zoom out because it would cut off the invisible parts. And only as we have finished this, the new paper animation is already coming in from the left. Sorry guys, CapCut crashed again and again, so I had to start over almost from the beginning, again. I tried to do everything based on the previous ones and create the new clip that way, but there may be differences in the end result compared to the previous ones, again. Okay, let's continue and pray that it won't crash, again. I quickly copy the background animation I created, because I got to the end, and here is when the black paper animation comes in. Since I haven't found a free animation like this, yet, and I'm running out of time, I'd rather make a similar animation to replace it, but if I find one in the future, I'll share it with you. This will consist of three parts, one is a dark blue background and the other is a paper compilation, and a paper tier animation that you can find in the description on Google Drive. I place and rotate both images, then adjust the transparency on the paper layer so that it is not so visible. I'll make a little correction in the adjustments tab to make it more similar to the color in Ali's original video. I will use the middle of this animation. Using the edit and reverse functions, I play the animation backwards, cut off the unnecessary part, rotate and enlarge it, after that I hide the blue parts using the chroma key, and I improve its size and position a bit, so that the tearing part is visible both at the bottom and at the top. Okay, in general this will be good, and now I will merge these three layers and make a compound clip out of them, then I will use the chroma key to make the green parts disappear as well. I extend the alley layer to overlap my animation and here is the result. I can start the next little part with the teacher and the classroom. To do this, I need an image, which I also downloaded from Freepik, then with the help of Photo P, I removed the background, created a white outline around one of the children and saved it as a separate image. I've already imported them in advance, so I'll just drag them onto a new layer and zoom in and synchronize the movements with the original video using keyframes. First, the teacher will be in the center, so I put him in the middle, 
Create the keyframe, then go to the beginning of the video and add another keyframe and remove the image so that it is not visible. The image stays still for a few moments, then slides to the right and finally zooms out a bit. I also add a keyframe to the beginning and end of this animation and position the later so that both the teacher and the student are visible. I drag the pre-prepared white outline image onto another layer and set the same values as in the school picture, and since the outline shakes, I apply the camera shake effect, adjust the values, make a compound clip and then slow it down in the same way as I did before. I copy the keyframes of the school picture and their parameters so that the white frame also moves with the student. In the last keyframe, when I zoom in on the image, I no longer see the original numbers when zooming in, but 100%. This is because I have already made a compound clip of it, so I am trying to guess with my eyes how much I should enlarge the white frame, including the shaking effect. And at this point, Ali already threw in the first element of the next animation series, the math book. I drag it onto another layer and then synchronize it with the original video. Practically, we do the same steps as when the halo fell on the statue. I scale, position, and rotate it. Then adjust the movement of the book with the help of keyframes and magnification until it is almost completely similar to the original. I rearrange the order of the layers so that everything falls behind the previous school picture, and I also move this picture down a little leaving more space for the math book animation, the next element of which is this A plus image. I found this on the net, but I changed its shape and color so that there would be no problem of copy theft. So I drag it onto a new layer and then place it behind the book by changing the order. And to make it stand out, I use the mask function with the circle shape, but slightly shifted from the center of the image so that the image is not revealed so regularly, and of course I synchronize this with the original video as well. Okay, I'll check my work and go through the whole animation, and see if everything is okay and tweak things if necessary. Even before the next picture changes, Ali hides the math book in the A plus grade by slowly taking it down behind the school picture. I do this easily with the help of keyframes, but we need a little trick here. When starting the animation, the previous images need to be cut in half so that we can change the order of the layers between the first and the last part. This can be solved with a little tinkering, and we can start with the next animation, which is a question mark and the appearance of texts. I find the beginning of the animation of the question mark and place it on a new layer. I also downloaded this from the internet and modified its shape and color to make it more similar to what is in Ali's video. So I position it, resize it, and then display it again using the round shape of the mask function. I first fit the mask function in a small way only at the beginning of the question mark, then a few frames later I move it to the right and zoom out, repeat until the mask reaches the center of the question mark, and then I will enlarge it completely. With this, I create the effect as if the question mark is drawn out nicely evenly along its shape. I'll adjust it a little more, and we can check this off as well. After that, we only need three texts with the appropriate words, but these are relatively easy to animate, because we only need the fade in and fade out built-in animations and a few keyframes to achieve this effect. I will use ZY Witty for the style of the letter, adjust its size, position and the length of the animations, then synchronize it with the original video, then copy it and do the same with the other two texts. At the end of the school part, Ali brings out the pictures that are still visible down to the left, that is, I place key frames on the school picture, the black frame around the student and the question mark layers, and I bring them out of the picture staying synchronized with the original. I'll quickly look at everything from the beginning, because we've done quite a lot up to this point, and I'll correct it if I find a mistake. Okay, it's not that bad. I only had to cut a few layers in a few places so that I could adjust the order of the layers a bit, and I forgot to move the question mark. I'll quickly correct it and then cut off the unnecessary parts, but other than that it looks pretty good so far. Let's start that political animation. I needed a picture of a politician looking figure standing behind a podium and I also downloaded this from Freepik and like with the school picture, I edited it with the photo P program to make it more similar to the original. I zoom in and apply the camera shake effect, as previously shown, just make sure that the image is fully visible, otherwise the compound clip will cut the image and you will have to start over like I did. After that, I synchronize with the original with keyframes, smooth out the movement, and then apply this Blu-ray scan effect, which is not quite what is in the original, but it will be sufficient now. 
I adjust the values a little so that it is not so strong. After that, there are a few lines that create the effect of speech. It could be solved with the built-in yellow sticker, a bit of mask function, and a couple of keyframes, but CapCut started to fail again, so I stayed with these simple white pre-animated stickers. I simply dragged, resized, rotated, and then copied it twice more, creating the effect of a conversation, similar to the original. After that, we have another text animation, but this is again a font style that is not available by default in CapCut, so we have to search a bit on the internet again. I found a similar one on 1001fonts.com called Xerography, which I also pre-installed, so I just have to use it. I need a new text, I rewrite the text in it, set the font style to Xerography, resize it and play a little with the other settings until it looks almost the same as the original. I'm going to use the spiral animation, which creates almost the same effect, and for the exit, I'll simply use the disband left animation. I match the length of the animations to the original, and then I drag the politician to the left, making room for the next animation, which is again a question mark. Now I will cheat a little, and simply copy the previously created question mark animation, position and resize it, then I delete the out animation from it, and lengthen the question mark layer. After that, I copy one of the previously used texts, then I look for the location of the first text, paste it, rewrite it, then correct the positions using the keyframes, thereby synchronizing it with the original video, then I copy it again, and do the same with the new text. Then Ali appears again from below with a transparent background, but fortunately, we have already done this one before as well, so I can copy this from earlier, making sure to copy all three layers. I check with the original, cut off the overhanging parts of the politician and question mark layers, then drag the layers down to see them better. Next is the dirty t-shirt part, which practically slips behind Ollie. For this we need the background, which is the black paper image originally used for the background animation, with a few modifications to the temp, hue, saturation, brightness and contrast values in the adjustments tab to get a slightly bluer effect. In order for this background to slide behind Ollie, I extend the Ollie layer I've copied earlier, then I copy it again and apply auto cutout, then I zoom out with keyframes as in the original. For the sake of simplicity, I apply the slide left effect on the blue background, and then where Ollie slides out of the image to the right, I cut off the overhanging parts of the Ollie layers. However, since I will need to set the opacity as well, I will use keyframes here, and copy the auto cut Ollie layer once more, and apply a motion blur effect to it as before, then I synchronize the layers and correct the opacity values. While Ollie is moving aside, the picture of the dirty t-shirt appears behind him, which I also took from the internet and modified it a little with photo P. I enlarge it, position it, put the camera shake effect on it, and then with keyframes I create an effect similar to the original, with the bottom of the t-shirt starting rotated from a smaller size. Then it comes up and gets bigger and bigger as it rotates to the center. After that, Ali recolors the background, which is also done by keyframes and by modifying the values found in the adjustments tab presented above. Now comes the smiley face animation, which I'm not really proud of, but I couldn't find a better solution. I downloaded one from the internet, then disassembled it into four separate images using photo P. One for the left eye, one for the right eye, one for the mouth and one for the head, then I hid them one by one and then revealed them using the mask function. I moved the two eyes one after the other from top to bottom with the split function, for the mouth from left to right, and for the head with the circle shape we used in the A plus grade, slightly shifted from the center and slowly increasing it. The only plus compared to the previous ones that now I set the feather value for the transitions to about 50, creating the effect that instead of a sharp transition at the edges, the animation takes place with a slightly blurred continuous transition. After I animated each part, I cut off the unnecessary parts and make a compound clip out of it. After that, Ali makes the t-shirt and the smiley head smaller and lower, for this I used keyframes as before, then followed by another text animation, which is very similar to the text animation used in the politician section. I copy it, rewrite the text, position it and synchronize it with the original video, then copy it twice more and do these steps with them as well. After that, Another Ollie pops up from the bottom, which we copy from our previous animation, then cut or pull together the layers we want to cover, and we're pretty much done with the animations. There's only one thing left, and it is none other than the subtitles. Fortunately, 
This is very easy to do in CapCut and Ali does not overdo the animation of these either. We simply click on the Auto Captions function in CapCut, then select the black letter white background style, set the height, width, rounded rectangle values. Then on the Captions tab, I break all lines so that a maximum of 3 to 4 words remain in each line, and I check that it has been translated correctly. I reduced the original volume a bit and then exported it and we are finally ready. Let's see what we created. This is the halo effect and it's subtly influencing your thoughts without you realizing. It's a phenomenon where if a person has one positive trait, like being conventionally good looking, then we assume they must have other positive traits, like being intelligent or kind or successful, even if we've just met them and if we have no evidence to support that. And this happens in almost every area of life. Teachers might assume that a student who excels at one subject, like maths, is a strong student overall, even if they actually struggle in other areas. And this is particularly significant in politics, where a leader who's charismatic and good at public speaking might be assumed to be a strong leader overall, even if they've not yet proven themselves in other areas like policy and decision making. But the halo effect can also work in reverse, where if someone has one negative trait, like having dirty clothes, it leads us to believe that they have other negative traits as well, like being disorganized and lazy and unproductive. So how can we use this to our advantage? Well, for ourselves, we can try and be more aware that the halo effect exists and try to do things to make a good first impression. Okay, guys, that was brutal. There are almost 200 hours of work in this one minute video. So if you learned something from it, press a like, and if you want to see more of this, then, then you have to wait because that was enough for now. If for some reason this wasn't enough, then go see a doctor, and after that you can watch this video next, where I show you how to make the paper animation. See you in the next one.